fallout from Operation Varsity Blues continues. That's the college admissions scandal where parents are charged with bribing coaches and college officials in order to get their kids into elite schools. Some of the accusations include cheating on college entrance exams. <clears throat> the parents include actors Felicity Huffman and Lori Laughlin and business leaders, including the co-chairman of a Manhattan-based law firm, as we told you last night. Today, the firm Wilkie Farr and Gallagher told us in a statement, quote, as widely reported, one of our partners, Gordon Kaplan, was among the persons charged in the college admissions matter. Mr. Kaplan has been placed on a leave of absence from the firm and will have no further firm management responsibilities. Also today, the college board, which administers the SAT tests on the defense, as some of the accusations include test takers exploiting rules that are there for kids with disabilities. In a statement, the college board said, quote, the college board has a comprehensive, robust approach to combat cheating. And as part of that effort, we work closely with law enforcement, as we did in this investigation. As the parents are facing charges, it does raise a number of other questions, including what about the kids? What about the schools? Joining me now is the former freshman dean at Stanford University, Julie lithcott Hames. Julie, welcome to Chasey News. How are you? I'm well. Thanks so much for having me. It's hard for a lot of us to imagine the kids didn't know anything was going on. Parents are charged, kids aren't. What, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think there are two camps. Uh, I think when the young people were made out to have been a member of a team playing a sport that they actually didn't play, obviously the kid was complicit in that. On the other hand, it looks like with some of the SAT and ACT allegations, maybe the student actually thought they performed well didn't realize that after they turned it in, someone had kind of fixed their Scantron form. And I think those two different categories of students bear different levels of responsibility. Is this new or is it pervasive in the whole system? Historically, wealthy people have been able to say, buy a building in exchange for their kid getting in or endow a faculty chair. But it really does force us to ask bigger questions like, how should somebody get admitted to college? Where's the fairness? Well, I think colleges are trying to make room for all different kinds of kids, looking at what was the quality of your high school? What's the quality of the community you attend? They're looking for kids who have the potential and the promise, regardless of how great their high school was. And I really applaud that. I mean, I think everybody deserves a chance at a college education. Let me ask you one last question. You wrote a book, How to Raise an Adult and a Real American. It's about, as you termed it, brown Americans not being accepted in. It is, is part of the problem, though, that we have too much judgment on skin color? I got to tell you, I'm an African-American person who has faced that allegation all my life, that I got into the colleges I got into because of my skin color. The truth is this. However many set-asides there are for kids from marginalized communities, are small and pale in comparison to the set-asides for the children of donors, the children of legacies, and children who are athletes, all of whom are overwhelmingly white. Julie, you are a fascinating person to talk to. Uh, I gotta have you back on because I wanna eliminate Pell Grants, and I'm sure you and I could go many oh rounds God. on that. But thank you for joining me tonight, appreciate it. Take care, have a good all one. Right. Let's bring in tonight's A-plus panel. We're joined by immigration attorney Afia Yunus. Good to see you, Afia. You too, Bill. And attorney and the publisher and editor of the Save Jersey blog, Matt Rooney. Good to see you, Matt. Great to be here. The professor, with all due respect to her, she puts things really in the context of race. And I understand. I mean, her yeah. book was about race and about, you know, brown skin Americans in her words. And like you said, Bill, we could have an hour or more discussion about what's wrong with the education system in this country. But I look at the list of those being criminally charged. It's the League of Nations, Bill. You had Asian names. You had Middle Eastern names. You had Hispanic names. This isn't about race. This is about privilege, rich privilege. Hollywood's involved. It's limousine liberals, Bill, that talk about the poor. They talk about the middle class, but when their own family or personal interests come into conflict with those folks they say they care about, they have no problem pushing them aside. Well, first of all, he's assuming that just because the name doesn't sound like John Smith, that they're not white. So I think there's something wrong with that. Secondly, there is specific data that establishes legacy admissions disproportionately adva advantage white Kids. There's no privilege in this studio. We all worked hard to get where we are. That's right. 